dental assistant is a career that requires dedication, personal responsibility, integrity, and a commitment to continuing education. Becoming a dental assistant is more than acquiring the knowledge and developing the skills. It's about becoming a professional person. Professionalism is an attitude that is apparent in everything you say and do in and out of the dental office. Characteristics of a professional dental assistant. You have a professional appearance, good grooming, good health, and appropriate dress. And by appropriate dress, what they mean is that you are wearing adequate scrubs. They're not too big, they're not too tight, uh, they're not wrinkled, they're not dirty, they don't have bleach stains on them, etc. Like I said, clean and pressed uniform, clean shoes, um, hair pulled back or up and out of the face, minimal jewelry, fingernails, fingernails clean and short, and good hygiene. Why do you think uh, you have to have your fingernails clean and short? Well, because you're working with teeth. So exactly. You, yeah, there, there could be bacteria stuck under the fingernails. Yes. And do you think that it, it would be easy or difficult to work on a temporary crown or inside a patient's mouth if you have super long nails? Very difficult because you wouldn't have a good grip on the instruments. Exactly. Very good. The professional dental assistant's attire. Attire may vary depending on the duties performed. The attire must be clean, wrinkle-free, and worn over appropriate undergarments. Excessive makeup and jewelry are not considered appropriate. Okay, so um, get into the habit of when you guys go into, when you start going into labs to do the hands-on on campus, get into the habit of ironing your uniforms because this is a habit that you'll create and then once you get out into the field, you'll continue to do it because it's, I feel like when a patient looks at you and they see that your uniform is nicely fitting and it's not wrinkled, I feel like they take you more seriously. Me personally, when I was in the dental field, I used to iron all my uniforms. single day something that I've been doing for a long time even now that I'm not in the dental field anymore and I have a specific uniform polo I still iron my uniform polo because I feel like that gives off like a professional appearance when your clothes are nicely fitting and they're not wrinkled or dirty um name the three essential aspects of professional appearance what are three things that you think um, can, can make you seem like you are a professional? We spoke about them a few slides up. Oh, good grooming, good health, appropriate dress. Yes, good mm -hmm. job. Okay. Knowledge and skills. Ideally, dental assistants should have both front desk and chair side clinical skills because you you never know when you're going to have to do front desk work. This is very convenient when a team member is absent from the office. Let's say um, you start working at a small practice, at a private practice where there's only maybe four or five employees. If somebody from the front desk is, let's say they, they have you know, an emergency, they can't, they couldn't come in or they're out sick. It's very important and it's very beneficial to the team and to yourself that somebody from the back, a dental assistant can actually do front desk work. Generally, dental assistants choose to stay in the position they prefer. So I've had um, friends that they have gone to school for dental assisting um, and they started out as dental assistants, but eventually they moved over to being 
a front desk. They started, uh, they were assigned to be coordinators to the specialists um, because each specialist in the company where I used to work for, they travel from office to office. They don't stay in one particular office. So they take their whole team with them. They take all their assistants and their front desk coordinator with them. Teamwork. Together, everyone accomplishes more. And remember what they say, there is no I in team. Attitude. Patients, coworkers, and employers appreciate the dental assistant who has a good attitude. It is important for the dental assistant to show a willingness to get along by avoiding criticism of others, show appreciation for what others have done, and be willing to pitch in and help. Dedication. Professional dental assistants are dedicated to their dental practice, their patients, the profession of dental assisting. Dedication is only possible if the assistant truly cares for people, is empathetic to their needs, and maintains a positive attitude. Responsibility and initiative. Arrive on time and don't leave early. Volunteer to help other staff members. Be willing to learn. Find things to do. Never discuss personal problems with patients or other staff members. How can you demonstrate that you are a responsible person? Name a few things. Um, arriving on time, staying for the full shift, being a team member, and not asking to leave early. Yes, good job. Confidentiality. Everything that is said in the dental office must remain confidential. Breaches of confidentiality can result in lawsuits against all involved. Never reveal any information about patients and never discuss patients outside the office. Okay, and that belongs to the HIPAA violation. Um, anything that they put in their medical history um, cannot be discussed with other people that are not attending to that patient. So let's say there's some, let's say there's a patient that is um, HIV positive, and you see that in their medical history. Um, you will discuss that with the doctor because it would be the two of you uh, tending to that patient. You're not allowed to discuss that patient's uh, health with anybody else, like another assistant, if it does not pertain to them or anybody from the front desk or anybody that's not, uh, dealing directly with that patient. Review your personal qualities. How do I interact with patients? Am I responsible? Am I dependable? Am I attentive to details? Am I calm in an emergency? Am I responsible for my own actions? And do I tend to blame others or find fault with others? Educational requirements. Dental assistants can receive their formal education through various types of programs. Most academic programs take eight to 11 months to complete. Some schools offer accelerated programs part-time programs or training via distance education like you guys are doing now. However, um, even when you do all your uh, training and your studies online virtually, you'll have to go into the labs uh, physically to actually do your lab checkoffs. Without these lab checkoffs, you will not be allowed to go out on extern. So career opportunities, the types of practice settings, solo practices, which are mainly private, um, owned by one doctor, group practices, uh, which is uh, owned by different owners or by uh, different, maybe two or three uh, dentists, dentists, sorry, specialty practice, which means that you can go into an office that only does um, ortho, which is braces, um, only does root canals, uh, uh, which is an endodontist, uh, only does oral surgery, 
which is um, ex they do extractions, uh, surgeries of the face and the jaw, et cetera. You can go into being an office manager, financial coordinators, scheduling coordinators, like I spoke before, like my friends went from being a dental assistant to a scheduling coordinator, which means they only take care of that specific doctor's schedule, patients, uh, payments, claims, et cetera, only for that particular doctor. Public health dentistry, you can also work for the uh, health department, hospital dental clinics, and dental school clinics. Other career opportunities as a dental assistant also include insurance companies. You can sell, you can sell um, insurance, uh, dental insurance, and you go uh, from office to office uh, talking with the doctors, with the office managers, letting them know what service you provide, the premiums, what do you need to sign up, etc. Teaching dental assisting, uh, like myself, I went from being a dental assistant to a dental instructor, then I went back to dental assisting, and now I'm back teaching dental assisting. And it, also a dental product sales representative. So you'll see those a lot when you go out into the field, when you're working in an office, you'll see a lot of reps uh, go into the offices and they talk to the doctors and the office managers and they give samples of different products that they're doing or something new that they're trying or they want the doctors to buy. So they want the doctors to give out the samples to their patients to see how the patients react to the to the to to that particular either toothpaste, floss or a type of um, instrument or et cetera. So salaries, salaries depend primarily upon skills and ability and responsibility of the position. Can be influenced by geographical location of the place of employment. So let's say you work at a dental office in, let's say Kissimmee because I live in Kissimmee. Um, they might not pay you as much as an, an office that you are in uh, Winter Park or in Dr. Phillips because of the geographical location. And salaries gener generally are equal to those of other health professionals with similar training and experience. Professional organizations. The American Dental Assistants Association, which is the ADAA, the organization that represents the professional dental assisting. It was formed in 1924 by Juliet A. Southard. Fowler's vision was an educated, efficient dental assistant with her own place in the profession of dentistry. The benefits of the membership. By joining the ADAA, you can grow personally and professionally and keep abreast of le legislative issues and current information. The ADAA members have the opportunity to attend local, state, and national meetings where they can participate in workshops, earn continuing education credit, and hear prominent speakers and establish lifelong friendships with other dental assistants. The, the Dental Assisting National Board, which is the, also known as the DANB, the DANB is the agency responsible for testing dental assistants and issuing the credential of certified dental assistant. To become a CDA, you must take and pass a written examination administered by the DANB. Successful completion of the Danby examination gives an assistant the right to use the credential of CDA to wear the official certification pin and to display the certificate. So this is a test that has three parts. It has chair side, it has uh, radiology, and it has, um, I think it's infection control. I'm not sure. I took it such a long time ago, but I did pass it and it did give me my certification for CDA, and it's something that you use for a lifetime, um, as long as you continue to do your uh, continuing education credits, um, it doesn't it, it doesn't expire as long as you do that. Um, and also, it, it looks good on your resume. If you go to look for a job, and let's say there's two people, yourself and somebody else, you have the same exact. Let's say you went to the same exact school, you got the same exact. Um, GPA, you guys had the same training, you have the same years of experience, but one of you has a CDA. More than likely, the person that has the CDA will be hired over the other person, even though everything else is uh, the same. 
The DAMBI offers five national certifications, the Certified Dental Assistant, the Certified Orthodontic Assistant, which is a, a test that mostly assistants that only do ortho or braces work with an orthodontic, uh, with an orthodontist take, a uh, National Entry Level Dental Assistant, Certified Preventative Functions Dental Assistant, and Certified Restorative Functions Dental Assistant. The most uh, uh, common ones that you'll see are the CDA and the COA. I have a question, Ms. Jo. Uh -huh. If I want to be um, a orthodontist assistant, so uh -huh. when I graduate and have my CDA, do I have to go back to school or do I just take the exam? No. When you graduate, you will not have a CDA. You will have mm -hmm. a certificate of expanded functions dental assisting, mm -hmm. which means that you can work in a patient's mouth. A CDA is something that you have to take on your own. You have to pay for the test mm -hmm. in order to become a certified dental assistant. That's if you want to. But if you want to go into orthodontics, you have to be trained first in orthodontics. You have to learn everything and then you'll be able to take the COA test. Okay. And, that's, and that's only if you want to. It's not a must for a job, but mm -hmm. it just looks better on your resume when you're looking for a job. Okay. And do you know um, like an average of how much it costs to do a CDA exam? When I took my CDA, and this was uh, many years ago, not many, less than, it was 2012, I believe, mm -hmm. when I took it, I think it was $500. Okay. So that was then. I don't know what the prices are now, but that mm -hmm. probably it probably went up just like everything else. So mm -hmm. okay, about five hundred dollars. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. So the benefits of Danby certification for the patient: it provides assurance of knowledge and skills. It strengthens confidence in the dental team, and it enhances the dental assistant's reputation regarding delivery of quality services. For the dentist or your employer, it provides a level of professionalism. CDAs stay in the field nearly three times as long as non-certified dental assistants. Some states allow CDAs to perform expanded duties. So like I said, you'll get your expanded function certificate first, and then later on, if you decide to do your CDA, then you are allowed to do that. Okay, so which credentials are issued by the Danby? Um, CDA, COA, NELDA, and CRFDA. All right, good job. Okay, does anybody have any questions on uh, the chapter two lesson?